Go from a fan of the show to star of the show. Send us your opinions now, and they could be discussed live on today's show. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. Hey, good morning, Canada. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show, and a big howdy do to Canadian sports fans around the world. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show on this Thursday, October the 10th, coming to you from the bunker where we woke up in minus degree temperatures. Ooh. And uh, we'll leave here in plus degree temperatures, but it's that time of year. Uh, I'm your host. I'm Rod Peterson. He's Darren DuPont. This is the warm up. If I'm ice cream, he's the cherry. That's good. That's a compliment. I'll take yeah, it. On top. All right. Uh, and we got the silver fox in the bunker joining us for warm up. You just saw him there. How are you, Remps? I'm, I'm the chocolate sauce. Yeah, there you go. You're the chocolate <laughs> sauce of the whole. You're the sweet part of the deal. Uh, the former manager of Brett the Hitman Hart, Kelly Rempel, uh, Moose Jaw Warriors and Pat's marketing guy and restaurateur and jack of all trades. Master of none. Yeah, this <laughs> is, uh, yeah. is going to be a fun show. I was remiss in... Writing down who the guests will be today, I had a loose idea. On the director's board over there, I can see it. We've got Stu Grimson, the Grim Reaper, coming up today from Smashville. Mike Sillinger, which is kind of um, not ironic. I would say it's a nice touch that our featured WHL prospect today for Sask Snow Beef is his son, Cole Sillinger, the Medicine at Tigers, and Silly will join us live. And curler Kirk Myers, he's going to be our curling insider. And, of course, we're going to recap... A very busy trade deadline in the CFL yesterday. The actual deadline became busy because it was a minute before that they made oh, the trade yeah. of Zach Caleros going to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I have a feeling that Rems and I are on the same page with what that trade is or was or what it means. I think it's a nothing trade. And if Winnipeg actually has Zach Caleros on the field at some time or starting a meaningful game, I don't think it's going to last very long. That should surprise no one that's been watching this uh, show for uh, for a long enough period of time. So we got those guys. Just hang on. Right. It is show number ninety two. The only ninety two that I came up with was one Zach Evans, who is a huge supporter of this show. I would dare I say fan of this show. The writer's number ninety two, Zach Evans. I like him a lot. Uh, in honor of show number ninety two, I wanted to recognize him. You guys be thinking of some ninety twos. I can't think of too many hockey guys. Can you? No. Hockey guys? No. There is going to be a couple, especially now. I think okay. Quentin Howden might have been number nine. Oh, that's a good time. one, Remps. That's a good one. That is good. Joe Lazito, watching from New York this morning, points out number 92 in the NHL, Vladimir Malikov. That's pretty good. Thank you. We got to go to New York to get a hockey guy. That's good, too. Number 92. That's impressive. Yeah. Football guys, Michael Strahan's 92. Thank you. Um, Another New York guy. Who else? Reggie White, the Packers, was 92. But I go to the Titans and Albert Hainsworth when he was he was really Oh, you good were ready for this. 92. You were ready for this. I was ready. Um, the warm-up yeah, warm is going to fly by here. I'm going to get to the sports updates, obviously. Our, our, our poll question, which is always on Thursdays during CFL season, is which is Canada's game of the week? Brought to you by Capital Auto Mall Universal Collision Center. Very simply, that is our poll question. Is it the doubleheader, one of the games Friday, Ottawa, Toronto, the Battle of Ontario, as you will hear Rod Black say, uh, Saskatchewan and Calgary, the late game, or one of Saturday's games, Montreal at Winnipeg, BC at Edmonton? I think we all know the answer, but we invite you to vote on our Facebook poll, web poll, or Twitter. I just want to say this before we kind of get to get this off my chest, and it's not anything bad, but I spent a good chunk of the morning on the phone with one Brent Sopel. And what a great guy, Rems. I mean, for any longtime Dub fan, you know what he means to the WHL. I exchanged texts with him recently because his mother, Connie, is one of my favorite people. She works for Empire Life in Saskatoon, one of our reps, and we talk about Brett a lot. Well, so, for those that don't know the Dub roots, that he played with the Blades and the Broncos, won a Stanley Cup of Chicago, played a, well, there you go, thank you, Clark, uh, played around the NHL, but he's still in Chicago. <laughs> this is so funny. For anybody that doesn't know his story, I just said the hockey notes, and you can look at his HockeyDB.com. If you look at the, the stats, that only tells half the story. And we tend to generally just go by the stats of these guys, right? We watch them on Saturday night, and that's all we know about them. Well, as he pointed out in the interview, and I won't be a spoiler here, I won't spoil myself, but he said that 10 years ago, he discovered that he suffered from dyslexia. It had been a lifelong thing and laughed at in grade two and grade three. Graduated high school in Saskatoon, could only read past grade eight. Said he should have never got his high school diploma. And 
had a stint in rehab, 65% of dyslexia sufferers have addiction issues. He's another. And I said, do you mind me asking how you discovered you had dyslexia? Had their seven-year-old daughter at a counselor, school counselor, because she had the exact same thing. So they're going through what he had. He goes, that's what I've been battling my whole life. All of a sudden, that light switch moment that a lot of us have. And all of a sudden now, he's a national spokesman for uh, America Dyslexia Association. He's trying to get his charitable foundation registered in Canada, the Brent Sopel Foundation. And this is no small thing, guys. No. He just had a golf tournament last week. Dennis Quaid, they flew in as the guest speaker. Chicago Bears had players in it. Wow. Henry Winkler, Jennifer Aniston, some, I think... Uh, some of the names of people that have suffered, I was going to say Brad Pitt, but I don't think Pitt's on that list, but guys and gals that have had dyslexia, famous people. Ozzy Osbourne. But there you go. So, <laughs> and addiction. So I just, the interview with Brent was sensational. He wants to get home soon. He obviously wants to open up uh, his foundation in Canada. He wants to vi- see everybody out here. So how cool is that? Brent Sopel says hello this morning. So I said, when we're having coffee with Western Canada, I will say hi to everybody for you, Soaps. What a great guy. Oh. Good player, too. Oh, uh, very remember, good player. I remember he broke my heart one time in Moose Jaw years ago because he wired a, a slap shot under the crossbar in overtime in a playoff game against my Warriors, and I just remember that thing came off that that stick like it was being shot out of a cannon. But uh, anyway, yeah, Brent Sopel, great guy. I think I might have said texted him. Sorry, tweet. You know, you DM people. Right. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it doesn't matter. He's a, he's a good guy, uh, comes from a great family. His mother, like I said, Connie, just such a nice person. And I've talked to her over the years about Brent and some of his challenges. And just imagine, imagine, like I've tried to imagine this, but I can't. But just try to imagine what it would be like to figure out through your whole life why everybody else in the class seems to be getting this English stuff and reading and writing and and you're not, for whatever reason, getting it. And people think you're stupid and they make fun of you. Well, it's because the words might as well be in Chinese. Yep. Right? It's a disease. And... and uh, the challenges that would come along with that and to be able to battle through all of that and all of that anxiety and just that. Well, and, and I would just say one quote from that, and then you're going to have to listen to the interview, is he said, I was, I was a bully. I inflicted a lot of pain in my life. Now, helping others is better than any day on the ice. Wow. So that's how his life has changed. Now, so there's that. Very cool. And trust me, we're going to get to the football people. Just hold on. Don't have your panties in a bunch. We're getting there. But I've written down the blades. We have to mention the Saskatoon blades. We have so many viewers in Saskatoon. They won last night, 2-1 yeah. over the Vancouver Giants. You were at the microphone for it. Tell me about the blades, and then we'll get to uh, what they sent down with you, which they, is awesome. They looked really good last night. Uh, early on, the shots were 10-1 to 1 over the Giants, who were most recently in the WHL Championship Series. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Yeah, they, they don't have Kirby Doc back, and they traded Ryan Hughes. They're missing a little bit of the, the real top-end offensive guys, but they're really good defensively and won a 2-1 game. Their captain, Chase Waters, who's an elite uh, face-off man, defensive two-way forward, scored uh, the opening goal, and uh, the defenseman, Nolan Ina, the game winner. Nolan Meyer was really good. It was a fun building, and they're... I like the promotion they have now. Win it Wednesdays, it's called. I uh, like it. Yeah, if, the, if you come to a game on Wednesday and the Blades win... On your way out, pick up a free ticket to the next home game. Win it Wednesday. You're Blades. a marketing expert, Ramps. What do you think about Blades that? Blades win. That's like guarantee every Wednesday's guaranteed win night. Well, you know. No, no, it's not. It's the opposite, <laughs> actually. <laughs> well, but let's face it. When you're playing, and I, this isn't a shot to the Blades, by the Better way. Better not be. No, no. I, I know <laughs> you love you, and you're still not wearing your Blades socks. Because they don't make them. Yeah. But, um when you've got an endless amount of inventory, you can do those kinds of things. Big building, lots of seats. Right? You can open up the upper deck but if you need for, to. Good for them. Yeah. Obviously, that's not a shot at the blades, but I like it. It's a great idea. For what? Because they're in a supply and demand challenge. Yeah. So what do you have to lose? And when you're early in the year, it's about getting people in the door, right? You can always give the first, you give the first one away for free, and they, and you have a really great experience. They'll keep coming back, right? Sure, it's so. like heroin. <laughs> Let's try this. Sure, <laughs> then you're hooked. <laughs> they um, don't want us comparing blades hockey to heroin. I'm sure. Okay, but. and we got a gift from the Saskatoon Blades. Do you want to? Ex- Wendell Clark, yeah. bobblehead. 
I, I appreciate the Saskatoon Blades and a puck. He's going to go up here beside Larry Fitzgerald for at least the time being. Wendell Clark of the Saskatoon Blades, one of the greatest Blades ever, will adorn our desk. Thank you, Saskatoon. And they did like our comments about Mitch Love and him saying, we wish Kirby Doc well and staying in Chicago because that's what's best for him. Yeah. They like that, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and why not, right? I mean... The team wants to win. Of course they do. And, and they're going to do what they have to do to win. The moves they've made. They've got draft picks. They've got some assets. Uh, um, but they're, they're good defensively. They've got that foundation of defense and goaltending. That's maybe the toughest thing to build into an organization is that foundation. So they have it. Um, yeah, and whatever happens with Kirby, they're going to be happy. All right. So I guess I won't get to the sports update. I'll do it on the other side of the break. I... Maybe we'll examine the Zach Caleros trade after the break, too, and what didn't happen on the CFL trade uh, trade deadline on Wednesday. But I will say this. uh, We have an alumni. We have graduated from our internship program, the great Connor Wallman, who's moving on. He's here today, and he informed us this is his last day because he has earned gainful employment. But we said he will always be alum. Right? The first. And he'll be playing in our all-star celebrity football game because, let's be honest, he was probably... The best the, player. <laughs> up there. <laughs> yeah. Him and Bresh. Yeah. Uh, Rob Bresciani. And uh, also, he'll be playing in our Great Western Indoor Slow Pitch Tournament, or ga- league, over at Ballers, right? Yep. Whenever we need him. Oh, yeah. So, Connor, thank you. He's no longer even Connor the uh, Volunteer. That this lasted is, two days. This is kind of sad. So, yeah. It the is. Former it's a sad. intern. Former former intern, intern. Connor, the former intern. So we thank you for his efforts. And as our sales guy, Tyler, said on the couch, he said, this guy's a baller. I said, of course he is. I wouldn't have brought him in if he wasn't the shizzle. (laughs) Big question that came into my mind now. (laughs) What? Are we now in the market for another intern? Do we have an opening? Oh, we do. But then you're going to need to apply. And that's a topic for another time. Last thing, Ty Daku Writing in our social media advisory says, thanks for talking about the mental health stuff, boys. National happy mental health day today. Is it? We seem to have a lot of those. I guess Which is, so. Well, I think 365 days, by the way, I should be mental health days myself. Like Bell Let's Talk Day. Yeah. I was doing more than one day a year. Um, and a few more. Ricky Kazama. Ricky Regina writing in from Ballers. He says, Rick Tockett, number 92 in Pittsburgh. Thank you. Rick Tockett. There's a lot of 92s, as it turns out. Gabriel Landeskog, uh, Jeff O'Neill, people have been uh, writing in. And people are saying, what are you going to do when you hit 100? You're going to have to tune in to find out. We already have that planned. And to answer a question from the Facebook wall, Sean in Saskatoon was asking, where can you find the live audio feed of this program on a daily basis? I guess people are still trying to find these things. It's pretty simple. RodPeterson.com slash listen live. On from your smartphone, uh, what else? Yeah, and your browser, your computer, or your browser. Yeah. RodPeterson.com/slash/listen live. Click on the little uh, arrow, and you got live audio, ten to noon every day, Mountain. Yeah, little arrow, little arrow. <laughs> Is that a song? Oh yeah. By who? Oh, don't ask me that. Okay. When we come back, the football talk, because it's a big week in the Canadian Football League. We'll check the poll results. This has been the warm-up. Coffee brought to you by Caliber Coffee. Thanks for joining us. You're watching on Facebook Live and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 